What's up, going Ray? on? Everything is good. How are you? Good, good. Just trying to figure out the, uh, <laughs> the headset here. Yeah? Yeah, the mic is on right there. I don't want to move it, though. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It sounds good. What's up, guys? Can you hear me? Oh, my God. The clarity. Love it. I'm going to go with this headset. Oh. Nothing crazy. Did you guys dive into the, uh, the future? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Into the future? I did not. I haven't been reading that book. I'm reading something else, but I want to hear... I want to hear what you got principles of trying to finish it. Uh, okay. um, I want to, uh, I want to hear you guys talk about it. And so I can ask you questions, you know, like dive into like what, you know, and I'll share my ideas. Oh, um, I like it. So what did you guys, what did you guys review? Um, last few days. Um, so I was just reviewing it right before the call. I started from, the end and was kind of working my way towards the beginning of the chapter. So I started on the longevity side. Mm -hmm. um, so like looking at uh, the escape velocity of, of longevity, like always trying to outbeat how long we can live. Yeah. Essen essentially for every year you live, you're adding a year to your life. So you're just outpacing death. What do you mean? How's that work? Elaborate. We're, we're going to get to the point where technology and advancements in science and medicine, for every year that you live, you're going to add one, at least yeah. one year to the, be, the, the longevity of your life. So if we can get that, that's the, that's the escape velocity where we're just, we're just outpacing death. So they're, I'm trying to imagine like what that graph looks like. So I'm, I'm assuming that they're taking some, some form of graph and some rate of our growth to expanding our, you know, uh, prolonging our life. But isn't it possible that the graph never, like it gets close to zero, right? Gets close to choosing one day, but it never can, you know, you know, like in calculus, it's, isn't there a good chance that that's the case? That's, or are they, that's what they're trying to do, I think. Yeah. 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 I think it's kind of relating towards like Moore's, Moore's law where, you know, the adva advancements in technology are going to you know kind of help us extend the extend the lifespan. Yeah, the longer we live, the more we can create new technology. The longer we can live, the more, know, and so on and so on. It's interesting you bring that up because I, I dove into Moore's law and how it is turning into quantum computing and going exponential, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Moore's law, so that we're actually running out of room on semiconductors, right? To like, I forget something like a couple atoms wide. It's like the heat, right? When, yeah. when the, like the heat of one starts messing with the other, yeah, it's like nano and, on the nano scale. And it's like we've been growing at this rate, but for us to go to like the next level to go truly grow exponential, quantum computing somehow stepped into the frame at the right time for us to like you know take it to the next yeah. level. If you apply that to what we're talking about in terms of like lifespan, right? Um, there's a, maybe there's a chance that as we're approaching that one day, like the physical technology isn't there, and that's when the singularity comes into play. And we upload our minds in the matrix in like thirty years, and that, then yeah. we just live forever. <laughs> then we live forever. You know that. That's that's what uh, Ray Kurzweil Google says anyway. Yeah, it talks about Ray in this where. Oh, Corey, the full cutout. It's happening. I heard it. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get rid of this voice meter, I'm telling you. Okay. Makes sense. Um They also yeah, said, it's also very Ray Kurtzwell in here. They also talked about Ro Rose Law, which is like Moore's law on steroids because Rose's law is when like quantum computing comes into play. So like as we improve quantum computing it's on this whole other exponential rate yeah. of, of climb cool rose law yeah rose's law i was trying to find a, a graph but for some reason google images is not showing up for me hmm. come on google 
While you're loading that, Corey, I, I use my equipment to uh, stream a Hearthstone game on Twitch right before this. Oh, my God. Are you just the top Hearthstone player in the world? Are you just the full, just like Kriparian, just dominating people? Uh, no, but I just do Battlegrounds, you know? And How does that work? I haven't played in so long. The game the is only- not even close to what I remember. Remote it's the only game. it's the only thing I play. I don't dive into everything else. Battlegrounds is fun because it's kind of like a set game of rules where you don't have to like buy cards or anything. It's eight people all playing at one time. Kind of winner take all, kind of a Fortnite for Hearthstone. Got it. I feel like I've seen that recently where it's like, oh, it shows you this one scenario and then psh, mixes yeah. into this other scenario. Yeah. Interesting. How many uh how many f- subscribers you got on the old Twitch? Uh first hour i had two viewers so incredible i consider that a win that's a huge win for the audience that's going through like hearthstone like i even have my first hater he was just like how do you start off that way and i was like you know yeah cool band one viewer now buddy (laughs) sorry about your luck no i like the haters yeah that's good sorry my allergies are kicking in i'm not sure what's going on oh no Florida, man. It's Florida. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know how to explain this image, but this is all I can find right now. Quantum computers are getting more powerful. Um, qubits. So 2016, we were at 50. 2018, 72 qubits. Oh, 2019, sad. 128 qubits. And then I guess it keeps going up, but this Rigetti taking on Google. I actually looked them up. I remember they had like made their quantum computer like free or something. And or like you can run um, like they open source the code so that you can run algorithms on their quantum computer. Through the cloud? Um, yeah. Forest open sourced. Separated. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, it's like they related it to the time of when, like, the internet in itself kind of became open source, where anybody could, you know, create a website or um, create software programs. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, yeah. So back to longevity. I don't like this website, the, the brain there. Yeah. That looks um, yeah. So I think, did you get to the part, Corey, where the book talked about the nine horsemen of our apocalypse? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what so is that? Called, basically the nine basically ways we're dying. Killing us. Yeah. How, how we are aging and what's, what's the actual disease of dying. And it says number one is, is genetic instability, which means our DNA doesn't always replicate um, exactly to the plan. The uh, second one is telomere attrition. The telomeres are like a part of the DNA. Think of like the shoestring, you know, the little plastic cap at the end of your shoestring. So telomere attrition is the ends of your DNA getting shorter and shorter. Then there's epigenetic alterations, which is nature impacting our DNA, you know, carcinogens, that can silence the gene that suppresses tumors. Um, then loss of proteostasis, which just means our proteins become less effective over time. Uh, nutrient sensing goes wrong. It means cells need to be, you know, cells need to be able to recognize and process all the different nutrients to stay healthy. And you know, when once that starts to fail, it uh, um, you know we can't process nutrients as well as we used to. You know, like properly digesting fat and protein. Uh, Then there's the whole free radicals and then zombie cells, which is the- So let me me pause you there for a second. These are only the ways that we're not going to live in terms of biologically, like we're going to die. Like, cause there's, I mean, we just talked about just general ways that we can all die. You know, this is, (laughs) this is a very- Oh yeah, yeah. No, this is just, this is like, if you, lived in a perfect scenario these are what's causing you to age on the inside to out. age yeah 
Well, got it. Yeah. So got not necessarily it. kill you by like, you know, getting nuked or, you know. Yeah. So, so it. there's like, there's the eight, you said there's eight of them. There's eight different things that cause us to age. Nine. Nine of them. Yeah. The seventh one is zombie cells, which is, um, let me see if I can sum it up. Zombie cells are uh, senescent cells that can't be removed from the body. They basically, you know, they die in your body and they take up space and they can't be, they can't be thrown yeah. away. They just don't do anything, but they're resistant to death. So yeah. it's like a, so a just, useless cell. It's just a placeholder, but it's taking up space. And if you get too many that just build up over time, you can infect neighboring cells and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's stem cell exhaustion, which is simply, you know, the supply of stem cells plummeting. Um, as we get older, we can't produce new stem cells. And then the last one is altered intercellular communication. Uh, for the body to function properly, the cells need to communicate. Over time, these signals get crossed and leads to bad things, you know, producing zombie cells, inflammation, cancer not good so there's a bunch of companies looking at you know the those nine sort of ways that we're aging and coming up with different ways to kind of combat it cool that is really cool you know as i get as i get older i notice inflammation in my body so much more like i I feel like i never even noticed it until until a couple years ago you know and now it's like you go drinking all night or something and you don't only get a couple hours of sleep. You wake up and you're like, what's am I fat? Like what is, what's going on? Am I bloated? What, what's happening? Well, you're just like inflamed because like yeah. your body's just like freaking out. Yeah. That's it's, every time you do cryotherapy. It, oh my God. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this, uh, this podcast is brought to you by cryo next global leaders in cryotherapy and wellness equipment, sales services and education. <laughs> Sounds oh, nice. So how long would you guys want to live if you could pick a number and live like that I amount of healthy life, you know, like vibrant energy still? You know. I mean, is forever an option? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends on how it, That's if, what if, they're shooting for. That's what Kurt is shooting for. What does it if depend you, on? It depends on, am I just going to keep getting like wrinkly and just more shriveled and look like a skeleton or are we talking like I turn 25 and you press a button and I'm frozen in time. I'll take the frozen in time at 25 all day long for sure. Sure. Okay. So live yeah. forever. You can get behind and that. You know, you kind of, yeah. You pick an age or you pick like a point in your life to say, okay, here's where you're going to lock it in. Um, but yeah, if it's like, you know, you can live to 150, but you're going to look like a 150 year old dude and, and have the functionality of a 150 year old dude. Uh, I'm not so sure how I'd feel about just prolonging that. What if you had like the internal like energy of a 25 year old, but you look like a hundred year old? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd probably, I'd probably be, down for that like the wrinkly old man from the six flags commercials but i'm just like dancing at a festival <laughs> just like zombie just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you seen the Could movie interesting have you seen the movie with justin timberlake called in time oh yeah yeah that's where they all get frozen at 25 and it's and like it's like the trade their their time yeah time is their is their currency and it's like if you run out of time you die so like he plays poker and he wins a hand worth like a billion years. And so he just has a billion years on his arm. He's just, yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. I remember seeing um, commercials and things for that. So I just I was, I was just on my phone and got a commercial for some new show. It's either coming out on Hulu or something where it's like at the end of your life, you just go into this program. It's like, Oh, welcome to the, the post mortem you know, Matrix or essentially it was like, so they're making a TV show about that where it's like uploading yourself into, you know, the Oasis kind of thing. Yeah, into a simulation. But it just looks like we're up, but then they, it's got all this like augmented reality stuff. They're showing these people like advertisements as they're just walking and they're just popping up and then they're like, man, these advertisements are, they know exactly what I want. It's like, well, yeah, (laughs) This this is where we're at already. Oh yeah. So one of the, 
the methods for this um, anti-aging was uh, young blood transfusions, which there was some research on. They did like, they would take young blood from like a mouse and transfuse it into an old mouse. And then he would then start like, his, his organs would start healing and become, you know, like they were younger and he had like more energy as like a younger mouse. And uh, now I think, I think Ray Kurzweil, I think I saw him in an interview saying that he's, he's doing it right now, like taking, taking young blood and transfusing it into him. I'm like, <laughs> isn't, don't they do, doesn't the same or well, something similar happen when you inject your own blood back into your body? Because that's what cyclists, that's what, Lance Armstrong did right so he wasn't he got hmm. away with doping because he would take out his own blood then he would go into like a bus inject his own blood it gives him like crazy endurance um oh I did not know that yeah uh so I, I don't know the difference between old blood or in, in your blood and new blood but um I think just blood in general getting an injection gives you energy well they did a reverse of like taking old blood and putting it in a younger rat and it made the rat you know, older. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> wow. So we're all going to be vampires as we get older. Cool. <laughs> I like it. The wow. ultra wealthy are just vampires that are living forever. Yeah. What if there's people that, that are doing it right now? Just keep it on the DL. Cause you know, well, like I said, Ray, Ray said he was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is blood. already a thing. I think you yeah. can, I think you can Google it and the, you'll find like sites offering this service. Young I blood share trans- still. Yep, we can see your screen. How Whoa. much does it cost? FDA issues Good warnings. For eight thousand yeah. dollars, people can receive a young blood transfusion that it holds any benefit. Despite the fact that it holds any benefit. Oh yeah, a year, year and a half ago. Oh yeah, I actually Ambrosia is that the company? That you guys read about because I've read about Ambrosia a long time ago. I was gonna say, I feel like I've heard about this Look a bit that. ago. Seems crazy. Yeah. Give me all the stem cells and blood. Two liters. That's really, it's like eight cups. It's like not a lot. <laughs> That's how much water I boil in my kettle every, every morning. <laughs> it's not that much. Dang. What were some of the other strategies they had? CRISPR, kind of just eliminating genes like in the worms. Oh, yeah. They had these worms that they were supposed to live for like 20 days. And they were like, they found these two genes where like, okay, if you take out this one gene, it adds six days. If you take out this other gene, it adds 20 days. And then they said, well, what's going to happen when we take out both at the same time? And it went up to like, a hundred the worm lived for like a hundred days it didn't just it didn't just go to like oh 20 extra plus six extra should be 46 they were thinking okay maybe we'll get like 50 days out of it they got like to a hundred that would be Whoa. equivalent to it's like a five-fold increase in lifespan yeah they were saying that would be if we did that in humans that's you're going to live to your 400 that'd be the equivalent of a 400 year old person sign me up <laughs> Except you just don't want your wrinkly old 400-year-old man body, huh? Oh, <laughs> uh, if I had energy, I could just like live I'd on be the okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would just – then I would be like, okay, let's do the full inception thing where they, you know, find the room of old people that are just sitting there in the dream world and that's all they do. And You know, if that's the case, I mean, I, what we're really talking about is the full upload. You know, What's if you don't care, upload? if you don't care about your body, you know, you just want your mind to live. That's, that's it. Yeah. You know, download that consciousness. That's, that's the play. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's kind of the same thing that's going on right now. Like if our brain is conscious and it's sitting inside this skull inside pure darkness, it's never seen the light of day. It's never had any of this input from the outside world other than our eyeballs, all of our senses, touch, taste, smell, all that stuff. But like, what about people who are blind, deaf, don't have a sense of smell, don't have a sense of taste? Like, what if you lose all of those things? Your brain is just floating in just this in, in outer space, essentially. It has no idea what's really going on. So mm-hmm. just put it into a computer. Just put it into a computer system. And then if you can activate all those senses, great. 
It's like when the guy did it with Avatar and Avatar, he's like, he's, he hasn't run in forever. He's paralyzed and he goes into the yeah. Avatar and the first thing he does, he's like, I'm running, baby. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. There's actually an X prize going on right now for people, for the first person to create an Avatar. Yeah. A&A Avatar X prize. What is this? 10 million? Whoa. Yeah, they, they want you to be able to transport your consciousness anywhere that you have like an avatar you know around the world and then you could just be able to you know it takes travel time to literally less than a second because you just hop into your you know download your consciousness and <laughs> That's so send cool. it across the world so uh, is anybody close um i don't think so <clears throat> avatars oh. for impact whoa there's peter diamandis there he is. So he's the founder of this company. Uh, he, I think he's like on the board of the X Prize, or he might be the founder. Oh, okay, got it. Um, okay, so they're saying like I need to build another shell and have it sitting over in Japan, and then when I want to be in Japan, I just yeah, I go I go into like a tube over here, like a little chamber. Yeah, it's like. Scotty turn myself up. off here turn and then send my consciousness to that body that shell and then that one's active and then this other one is just lying dormant exactly yeah well like you're you're asleep or something but your mind is in a, in a different body wow then it brings the whole like what's the commerce like on that you, you know you would have to so expensive you would have to own your own avatar or the, well you could probably, some probably share have, programs like. yeah it'd probably be like a couple they have like 10 avatars in japan and it's three thousand dollars a day you know and then you just lay yeah. down and you have to go probably it's going to start off where you'd have to go to a local uh, facility get into a giant chamber where they can jack up all your senses you know whether like either yeah. the full right into the cerebral or the you know they're gonna have to just put things all throughout your body sensors sensors all over yeah all these little yeah electrodes all over your body yeah that's our and then what's the avatar gonna be though it's gonna be a robot or they're yeah. trying to make it like a like a living organism no it's gonna be, no, a, robot. be a robot yeah they just showed a picture of it right uh, i'm not here i think it was yeah right here's there. oh it's this is a oh, there you go. two minute video you got sound on this bad boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Avatar insurance. Let's, let's <laughs> come up with the, let's come up with the company right now. It's gonna be expensive to insure those things. Get the domain avatarinsurance.com. Just lock it down. This is gonna be super dope <laughs> and what would make just, sense you just put on like a vr headset and you, then you just need sensors right for like you probably just get rid of smell forget smell you don't need it no you can they can do smell they can do the smell. holiday they can do smell touch i was sound, in a vr sight. with with a smell and it was like it Whoa. was wild i was I actually did the the avatar ride in in Disney oh, World. oh my god that's it oh my god Wait, I missed it. Go back. <laughs> that was sick. What happened? Sorry, I turned the volume. Just down. show this guy like walking around in like a giant. Oh, thing. there it is. Uh, oh, okay. So you're still using your body. You're just controlling. The you're robot controlling over there. the robot over there. Okay, so you're not like asleep. I, I think that's better because like, you know, what would happen if the robot died with your consciousness in it? You know. Yeah, just like oh, we forgot to charge this one tonight. Oops. <laughs> so they're basically it's got no battery. I mean, they're basically just taking an Oculus Rift, adding sensors, and connecting it to a robot. To a robot, and then you just put the robot anywhere. Cool. Interesting. I imagine that being like, Use cool and and fun and stuff, but it's like to me, it seems clunky. Like very clunky, yeah. Well, it's gonna start but, off clunky, of course. It's gonna, sure. be, you know. But why wouldn't you just make it like a really tiny drone, like those? You know how they do those drone races that can go really fast and something. Like, I'd rather be able to control one of those on the other side of the world 
and then like climb a mountain and you know what I mean? Something like that to start. That hmm. seems a lot easier. Like just being able to control a drone from the other side of the world. You know, the army already does this. Yeah, they, I guess, do I guess it, we so. already do it. Yeah. Yeah, just make it readily accessible. Because like, what if you're going and then, you know, like you step in a giant puddle or something or, you know what I mean? Like the, I'm telling you, Avatar Insurance, baby. <laughs> Let's get it going right now. Like, what if you step in a huge puddle or something or step? Yeah, I guess you when know, you put it walking. that way, like, I don't really see the point of having the whole robot body. You know, is that really necessary? Because um, we just need to see it. If you can't, if what's you can't the point of even traveling it, to be anywhere at any time? This really comes. It's like this, with people, or it really comes down to what they're asking of the avatar prize winners right or the contestants like what are the what are, what are the what rules the qualifications yeah exactly Who, like i know for determine like the winner for like moonshot they you know they had to put a robot on the moon you know you have to travel a certain distance film in 1080p and stream it back to earth there's like a bunch of qualifications for avatar we just need to look up you know what yeah, they what need are... guidelines there we go oh, there we go go ahead and read Who that can out participate Solutions can come from anyone. Um, judging criteria. All registered teams must submit a detailed competition plan uh, describing how they will develop their avatar solution. Up to 150 qualified teams. Up to 20 teams will be selected by the panel. Uh, da, da, da. Probably that competition guidelines PDF. There you go. The old 21 Boy. pager. <laughs> Whoa. Overview. A lot team of goals check and boxes. composition. Yeah, we'll have to dive through that Let's another do... time, probably. <laughs> what do you, do you think you can find it? Testing scenarios, maybe. Number seven. It's either that or it's this, what or... is it, qualifying submission? There you go. Yeah, three points. Or, or it's going to be under testing. These are testing sites, safety. Uh, let's go with ju judging. There you go, judging criteria. There you judging go. Judging criteria. So Page 12. Start with 12. Okay. Um, skills such as vision, sound, and haptics being conveyed to the operator through the avatar, as well as mobility, endurance, transmission of enhanced capabilities, the ability to deal with latency issues, and more. Teams are required to demonstrate a unique avatar system. However, individual technology components may be purchased. Um, avatar systems will not be judged on appearance, but rather the avatar's capabilities and how well it performs the required task. Cool, doesn't so matter how it looks doesn't matter how it looks as long as it's sending all that information yeah. back to the user mm -hmm. they can feel it they can see it there's no Here's latency the issues testing scenarios and healthcare family connectivity maintenance tasks disaster relief learning exploration super dope i don't think it's going to look anything like irobot anytime soon but yeah. No, you got to just figure out the capabilities first. People make it testing figure scenario. out how to make it look sexy. Yeah, they don't even have the actual, it says the actual testing scenario task will be defined throughout the competition. It's going to be something that looks like Wally, you know? <laughs> it's like rolling around. Picking up trash. Yeah. Cool. Very interesting, though. That's going to be exciting to see. Like, so that oh, let's competition the is underway. Can we watch that interview yep. with Diamandis right there? It's four and a half minutes. A little CC action. Yeah, CC for sure. Announcing today a $10 million competition that's being funded by a, some air, AAA company uh, for Avatar X Prize. In order to win this competition, what a team needs to do is build a robotic avatar that I can put on a pair of VR goggles, a haptic suit, and basically uber my cool. senses and my actions into that avatar at a distance so for example 
If there's a nuclear power plant having a meltdown, I can send mm. an expert in there to turn the right knobs and shut it down. Or if there's someone who's ill and they weren't on the right physician, there you can send an expert from a distance to go and examine that patient, see what's going on. Yeah, we've got Skype, we've got FaceTime, which is just video. This is about actually putting all of your senses so as you look around, you know with your suit on <laughs> the robots looking around as you move your arms and walk around, the robots moving around. It's about the future of travel. That's interesting. I want... It's from simple to complex task, and I immediately thought of there's some surgical robotic instruments now. This is really difficult to do with the choppy CC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Yeah, usually, you have, usually we're able to hear sound to your transmission, yeah. Justin. I'm not sure. Is it maybe because my headphones are in? Is that? Yeah. Oh, usually you have it going through speakers, right? Yeah, can you not hear it at all? Oh, yeah, you, oh no, because it's going through your headphones, so it's, yeah. not, uh, okay, yeah, it's okay. not broadcasting yeah. to the mic or anything. Hmm. Don't worry, we'll find a way. We'll figure out how to do it through Zoom what, later, I'm sure. What I Peter is really doing is he had a conversation with some, this, admir this. some admiral that said, hey, look, we need to send in like mech warriors. Uh, let's crowdsource this. And uh, now, oh, we're yeah. gonna, now we're just going to send it. Now we got drones for the sky. Now we're going to have mech warriors for the field. Yep. You know, yep. Probably first, first person to start militarizing that is gonna have quite an advantage. Can you hear the sound now? No, no. Mm -hmm. It was like super faint, tiniest bit we could hear. Um, yeah, it's just the full Skynet Terminator. Uh oh. Hmm. Not good. I'll tell you what, when. There, there was something in Orlando yesterday, the day before. There are ten or fifteen little white dots were in the sky, like a stream in in space. And oh, it yeah. was the SpaceX post on that. The SpaceX satellites. Yeah. Just imagine when AI gets hold of that. Just you know, <laughs> the full global internet. You know. Wait, there was a stream of satellites that you could see. So you could so, visibly see them. There's a picture, yeah, where you can literally just see. It looks like UFOs just coming in a row, like a line. Mm -hmm. See if you can pull it up. I've there. caught a couple other people around the world who've also captured it. You can you can find several videos of what it looks like that are very clear. Oh wow, yeah, that does look very UFO. The line of satellites. Yeah. 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 You just. Yeah, when you see that for the first time, you're like, uh, they, inv invasion. Yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and it just moves across the sky, but then it like it just disappears into nothingness. So you're like, what is going on? Starlink satellite trail. It's Starlink, yeah. Yeah, that would be, that'd be crazy to see. I think they have like something like over 400 satellites now in space for this. They're aiming for a couple thousand, but... They put up like a f several a month. I thought it was. It's yeah. like a, it seemed like a pretty fast rate. Something like whoa, oh, twelve thousand satellites is what they're aiming for. Yeah. yeah, I thought they're then. Then I think they are putting somewhere between like thirty and sixty per month into into orbit. And do you know what the plan is? Elon is going to take Starlink, separate it from SpaceX, and then do an IPO. How smart is he? Because he's the only person that can put it into space for that cheap. He has zero. He will have zero competition forever. It will be a monopoly on global internet. I mean, I don't care. Once again, mm. <laughs> I don't care as long as it advances humankind and it's fast. If it's, I want to just yeah. be gig up, gig down, and then go from there. If it's gig and, up, gig down, <laughs> and I can go anywhere in the world with it, and then. Eek. And then, and then he's going to just hook up all the Teslas to it and be like, yep. now I, I win yep. with full yep. automated yeah. driving. Yep. I permeated the entire earth. Yeah. Isn't Google doing it also though? Or Amazon? Let's see. What the um, yeah, I guess Jeff Bezos is going to try, but dude, everyone else is so far behind. So far behind. Yeah. yeah. They don't even have their rocket. Yeah, they want reusable. 3,200. Yeah, no. SpaceX is definitely the highest. OneWeb wants to launch 650. Fail. Facebook is also developing. They're a little way behind. 
uh, Facebook was like, they were like, oh, we want to put it on drones and like fly these drones around. I'm like, that doesn't it's sound very sustainable. It's really about the cost of access to space because Elon gets a rock bottom dollar. Like it's going to cost him to launch one reusable lo- rocket. The same it's going to like, I mean, it's. It, he can probably the- launch a hundred or maybe more for what the cost it cost them to launch one. Because if somebody else wants to do this, I believe OneWeb was, they were doing it before Elon did it. And then Elon kind of became the transportation right because they were gonna have to pay nasa right lots yeah. of money elon now just dropped the cost and i mean it, if it cost you if it cost one web 60 million dollars to launch one rocket for spacex it's less than half right to me oh yeah they started a while ago 2012 yeah no they're, what they're, they're, across they're done <laughs> No, they're done. They're done. I mean, they lost. Yeah. They they just have invested so much money. Yeah, they can't really turn the switch off now. Mm. Oh yeah, here's the Google one. I think Google's the only one that can compete with. Yeah, but how SpaceX. they? But how could they compete if they don't have access to space for that cheap? Um, I can't remember who was using the balloons. I think that was a weird idea, but they were like going to make a bunch of. Yeah, internet high air balloons, hot air balloons. Yeah. Yeah, I hear a lot about stuff being developed and ideas playing around, but but, but SpaceX has four hundred and twenty satellites one that you can in the see air. the stars. You can see, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if that if they're that far ahead, I mean, then you have to do maintenance on them as well. Like every two like, years, they're going to go down. You have to put them back up in the air. So I just would. Like if I saw like, that, and I, he saw that last night. He said you did. Yeah, yep. You would just be. You would just think. Uh, like, I would be like, wait, what? what? <laughs> Am I in a Here simulation? They Here they come. <laughs> like, are these pixels yeah. on the screen that like? <laughs> did you see that other? I saw another video where somebody was posting it as a joke, but it was like, oh look, twenty twenty, loading more stuff, and it was like this thing spinning in the sky that looked like a little loading circle. <laughs> I, and I don't know exactly what that was, but it had to be fake. No, because I think that it's a, it's some type of phenomena that happens because it's been recorded more than once. Oh, but you it's mean been, from, it's been explained from the rockets? It's it must yeah. be. Yeah. Now you can calculate when you can see it. Oh, it's pretty cool. Well, if it worked, it'd be cool. <laughs> Can't open it though. Huh. Oh, here we go. Look at this website. This, is, <laughs> this needs this some work. A piece of work right here. <laughs> They're just peeling back that cover um, for you. Just, <laughs> input the year of launch or re entry. That's not what I want, right? I want to put in where I live. <laughs> tell me <laughs> what day and time and what direction I need to look up in the sky to see this. No, I believe that might have just been them like maybe getting into position. I do believe that uh, SpaceX is going to be making them uh, completely dark to uh, help the astrophysicists from looking out um, into the into the stars, right? Makes because sense. I guess they were making a complaint yeah. that they were affecting. It's like getting our it was away. Like putting a bunch of light pollution. <laughs> yeah. You've been exposing your lens for twenty eight hours or two <laughs> days, seven days, and then this thing just zips across your lens, and you're like. <laughs> but Man. I feel like that's going to be pretty negligible coming up anyways because we're just putting the most powerful telescopes into space beyond that yeah just looking up going to be interesting to see what type of images we get back from those bad boys I to look wait and we're like looking back in time right it's like we're technically yes yeah you're looking so far out it's like it's you we're, could almost look back to sort mm-hmm. of the big bang it's it's pretty exciting. It's definitely super cool. What's this, Justin? This is Peter Thiel's company. Unity this is a Biotech. dope-ass website. I they like this. They are developing medicines that potentially halt, slow, or reverse age-associated diseases. While restoring human health. I like this. Where can I invest 100 bucks? <laughs> Oh yeah, they're doing the the zombie cell approach, getting rid of those 
senescent cells, the wasted space. Just clean up the trash. You know who needs to get on this is our buddy Joel Heisler with his, he's a PhD in circadian rhythms. That's where Joel needs to dive into for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to call him right now. Yeah. Joel right, would make a great guest on the oh, podcast. Oh, we're going to hit him up. I'm going to shoot him a text and get him on for sure. Yeah. What does it look like inside of university institutions right now? GDF 11. I think this is what was in the young blood. Yeah. And then here's a company that's instead of transfusing young blood, it's just taking that component from young blood and injecting that. Okay. Yeah. So they're just yeah, taking many of the regenerative effects of young blood, but just using GDF 11. Got it. Reduces age-related cardiac hypertrophy, accelerates skeletal, skeletal muscle repair, improves exercise capacity, brain function, cerebral blood flow, and improves metabolism. I feel like more and more we're kind of becoming aware that we're just like living in an avatar now, you know? Um, oh. Figuring out how to hack ourselves. And no. All this and that. Did you, I sent you that thing about Richard Dawkins talking to Lex Friedman on the Artificial Intelligence podcast, and Charles, yeah. I cannot yeah. believe... Cannot believe I never heard that before. He's like, yeah, there's a good chance Just that, you know, our cloud. brains operate like a cloud computer, of course, mm. right? Because like, we're, we don't store those, that, those memories in our brain. They're stored somewhere else in another goddamn dimension, and we're just accessing them. Mm. It's like, of course. So it's like, we're really, our avatars, we can do whatever we want to them. You know, you can create, you can make your body look however you want. You just got to have enough willpower to do it. You know, that's it. I think it comes down to just pure physics. Yeah. You're absolutely it's, right. <laughs> we're we're just constrained. We're just we're just confounded by this these these laws of these physics in the current universe that we operate in. First principles. Yeah. The principles. Um, let's see what else I opened up. These are just all the different longevity companies. Alkahest. They are. Going after neurogenerative, degenerative, age-related diseases. Oh yeah, I think these are the guys going after Alzheimer's and trying to figure out mm. you know, fixing those disorders. Oh yeah, so NMN. This is, um, I think Peter was talking about this. It's like a supplement that he takes. Oh yeah, it's like one gram a day or something. <clears throat> this is what the guy, like the leading researcher on this, was on Joe Rogan. He can't. He just doesn't stop talking about it. He looks a little weird. Uh, let me see if I can find him. He talks about this in detail on Joe Rogan, and I made me want to start taking it. Huh. NAD plus. Yeah, remember that being. Big David. In... His name's David Sinclair. David Sinclair on Joe Rogan. He's like the leading guy on this. PhD. Look, how old do you think he is? 51. Mm. Give wow. me that stuff right now. Give it what? to me. <laughs> that guy in that picture right there? Yep, he's 51. Oh. In that picture. Yeah, 2020. He looks like that. Mm. Holy smokes. Yeah, 51. All right. He looks younger than I do. All right. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, he looks like probably right around our age. How much does how much do we take every day? Let's find this out. <laughs> he said one gram a day. That's it. All right, it's going to my brain smoothie just like that. I'm gonna order some right now on Amazon. Yeah, fifty bucks. Right, Six so months. Four of those little This is likely a scam. Somebody's not a believer. <laughs> you have to believe, man. What they're yeah. doing, they're just, yeah, they're, they're releasing these other counteractive chemicals that are just working against Check the magic here. You gotta believe. NAD plus. I remember studying this in, in brain school. NAD Look plus. Look at all the ad spend on that. Yeah, Whoa. seriously. That's a little bit of a what is, market this, right there. what is this central to metabolism 
Uh, yeah, I knew it was related to NADH, so they go back and forth to like transfer energy, electron transfer. Um, I'm not sure how that helps you stay younger, though. Hmm. Yes, we need to figure out why does this why does this do what it does? We just we should just watch the clip of David Sinclair talking about it on Joe Rogan. Let's see. Wait, I think I have it. Type NMN. Uh, there we go. Two forty two. This one. The, the one that's two minutes to the right. Two min oh over here. Cool. I figure out the speaker issue. There's gotta be a way to play videos and stuff through them. Yeah. yeah I can just like Unplug my headphones for a second. Yeah, no. see Michael pick it up. Picks it up. Well, the x rays I can say definitively based on our research uh, would age you, uh, age your tissues. Well, what's it doing to you? Well, it's breaking your chromosome and causing that clock that I was talking about earlier, that biological clock, uh, to accelerate. Is there something you can do to mitigate that? If you know you have to get an x ray, should you do something right afterwards? Potentially, potentially, you could take NMN, which we've shown in male in mice, protect them against the effects of radiation, and that's one of the things we've talked to NASA about for getting to Mars and back safely. Uh, so when I'm on a flight, I take some NMN in the expectation that it's going to boost my body's ability to prevent those changes to the clock. Now, is there a commercially available NMN that you would suggest if someone wants to purchase it somewhere? Uh, well, so. I don't divulge company names and there's two reasons for that one is i haven't tested them so i right. actually literally don't know uh but the other is that um you know, i, I want to stay above the fray and not, not yeah. get involved but it, but there are if people want to go google and go look online they can find commercially available nmn right um so yeah again i've, I've got a number of pages in, in the book on that so it's it's all laid out but okay. in summary this um, one right here ladies and gentlemen look at that Lifespan, why we age, why we don't have to. Mm. Thanks, Joe. That's my NPR voice. Yeah. You can donate. If you enjoy programming like this, <laughs> putting me to sleep. I know, that's what we do, man. Yeah. Something happened with people. They thought to be intelligent, you have to talk like hey, you're ready to put people to sleep. It's time to get sleepy. Uh, anyway, so the NMN. Yes. Um, <laughs> On the internet, mm -hmm. uh, just just go get the facts straight. I don't sell anything. I understand. My name's all over the internet. If you see my name with a company, it's BS. Uh huh. Beautiful. That's good. Uh, anyway, so the NMN, there are companies that sell. It's more expensive than another molecule that's related called NR or nicotinamide riboside, which is also what the body can use to boost NAD levels, and that's a little bit cheaper. Uh, and they've both been shown in animals to be. Uh, to boost the switzerlands and help those animals be healthier in old age and reverse some aspects of aging like endurance, loss of endurance, that kind of thing. Uh, protect, protect the eye, protect the hearing as well. Um, so that we don't know if it works in humans. That, let's be honest. We right. don't know if these things work. But let's also be honest. We know what's going to happen if we don't do anything. And that's not pretty either. Do you have a... Um, you know what we need to do, Corey? We need to see if Joel Heisler can make this stuff and start a business with him. Just sell it online. There we go. Yeah. I like it. All right. Are you going to order that thing you saw on Amazon? Jay, and yeah, throw it in your smoothie for real? Um, yeah. I'm, I, I got to do some research on the serving amounts because this is, says 125 milligrams per cap, 60 capsules. Right. I thought it was 250. This is 250 per serving. 
So oh, okay, got it. So once you take two, take two oh, I see two times one twenty five. Uh, That'd be that means you would need to take eight eight to a, get a, to a gram. That could get costly. That's just what Peter Diamandis takes in. Uh, That's so stuff right like, there. It's actually cool in the in the Audi audio book audio version of this book. There's like little extra snippets of him being interviewed by his co-author that aren't mm. in the book. So that's when he was talking about uh, about this stuff, NMN, and how he incorporated it into his you know daily intake. He takes a gram every day. Is that the exact one that he uses? Not this one. No, uh, he it doesn't. He doesn't specify which one he uses. This is just the first one I found when I. Uh, That's Amazon's choice. But as you can see, there's probably there's four there. It's probably another four down here. Probably some second page results. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people buying ads for wow. NMN. Wow. Interesting. Something. It's just another CBD. Yeah. 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 My God. Interesting. Uh, the other longevity technique before I forget it was um, replacing your organs. Oh, oh yes. What? Yeah, so, guys, come on. Team rock lot. She's working on a way to. Formerly Martin. Rothbard. Formally, yeah. <laughs> now Martine. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically just grow a new liver, new, you know, just just like a like car maintenance, you know, you just go in and replace the parts on your body and and in that way technically you could have the appearance of a twenty five year old because you could just you know, the or the skin is an organ that you could just keep reprinting and plastic surgery <laughs> fix yourself up. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that that was interesting how she basically was like her daughter got diagnosed with this super rare disease and she's like, I'm just gonna cure it. And then just started grinding. <laughs> yeah, she just she committed like, to it. Yeah. Just committed. No former experience. Like <laughs> she had five years. That was the timeline the doctors gave her. And she like literally was like, Day one, I'm just gonna go to the library and trace back all the roots of like just break down like parts of this disease to its simplest form. And then go and like delve into each of those things and just she just kept distilling. Yeah. She said she started so she, in like the medical library and then found like yeah. the bigger uh topics and then would look up those topics in like a college library. College. Yeah. And then, and then distill it down to like a high school library with those concepts so she could finally like make sense of um just look that. just looking at her, her from this one Google search. UCLA. She's got a JD and an MBA. She founded Sirius XM and and left after the IPO. <laughs> and now, like, this is what she does. Like, I mean, the she willpower. Cashed, she cashed in from the IPO to pursue yeah. curing that disease. And, like, I just respect the willpower so much because someone that's her age is just like, oh, no, I'll just cure this disease and just do something else to save lives. Just all yep. about how, how bad do you want it, you know? And like, that's crazy. Like, the motivation it took was, like, her daughter having five years to live. Oh, I got a timeline. Okay, time to get to work. Yep. So, super dope. Yeah, I think they called it moonshots. Just mm-hmm. moonshots. She, like, overcame, like, seven moonshots. Like, if you overcome one moonshot in your lifetime, you've done it. She did it seven times. Yeah, her first moonshot was Sirius XM, the first global satellite radio. Her second moonshot was sex reassignment surgery third moonshot uh is when she solved you know she cured her um uncurable disease for her daughter um and then her fourth moonshot is she's you know she's creating an unlimited supply of transplantable organs what yeah and then she's she also has other like she's um doing um flying ambulances so oh wait oh wait or like whoa flying whoa. uh whoa. organ transplant whoa whoa, yeah. whoa 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 Let, let's back up um i didn't know this uh she's the highest paid female executive in america that was born a male mm-hmm. i did not know that what an interesting human 
How bad do you want it, man? <laughs> mind over matter, baby. Holy crap. Mind over matter. Yeah. What? Yeah, definitely interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to watch that TED Talk for sure. It's probably about like 3D printing organs. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where she's at now. That's that's the game she plays in. Whoa. She's saying probably around 2028, death by organ failure will become a thing of the past. What? Yeah. And she committed to those other other moonshots, so there's no yeah. reason to doubt her on this one. Yeah, I don't think she's playing video games on the weekends. If you could, if you could <laughs> bet if you could bet on this lady, yeah. This is a, this seems like a solid bet. You know, someone's yeah. like, she probably, if anyone tells her she can't do something, she like laughs in their face. Oh, I can't become a guy. Okay. I can't, you know what I mean? Oh, I can't <laughs> save my daughter's life because of this incurable disease. Okay. Yeah. $109 on the stock. Uh, it's not a bad price. Buy a couple. <laughs> it's probably 10. Yeah. Just throw a little the- down ball on it. No biggie. 11 hundo. Man. Cool. All right. I forget what, what Sammy Med was. They are. Uh, they're doing this pathway, which, which I'm not quite sure on. It's something about helping cells communicate mm. better with each other. Interesting. You know, what so I'd like to what I'd like to start doing is when you bring something like this up, let's assume that at some point we'll take all these and. Uh, make them strictly audio and upload them to all like the podcast channels. So let's communicate to people that are only listening and not watching like what we're looking at, mm. you know, makes a good point. Let's just, let's just make it like a habit. You know what I mean? You know, narrate a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is basically going after one of those, um, one of the nine horsemen that was all about, you know, the, the signaling between cells start to start to fail which causes mm. a lot of inflammation and creating these zombie cells. And so they're trying to increase the, the signaling pathways. Makes sense. Got to open up that bandwidth. And then this one was like the coolest to me because it reminded me of like Tony Stark. So this is in silico medicine and they're using AI um, kind of like, you know how, I forget which Iron Man it was, like Iron Man 2 or or one of the ones where like Tony uses Jarvis to like create a new element. He's like, we need the element to be like this, mm-hmm. have this features, you know, have this, you know, capabilities. And then Jarvis just like runs his models and he's like, all right, this is how, this is the Whoa. new element and this is how you make it. So that's what in silico medicine is doing for drug discovery. They're just, you know, you type in, we need a, a drug with these features with without these side effects you know a protein that uh can lock onto this receptor and then um it reverse just, engineers from there and it AI. shows you how to build the molecule it starts yeah for, on a molecular level and just starts putting together this oh that if you need those components and those properties it would look like this yeah. boom whoa and that used to take like years to do and now it's like cut it down to weeks they were saying like for a real drug to like hit the market usually about five thousand different drugs are created five of those make it to human trials and then one of them will get approved yeah and that process looks anywhere like could take up to 12 years yeah cost anywhere from 2.5 to 10 billion dollars yeah. and now they're going to be like oh this is going to take a couple weeks now maybe a month mm. and they're using a specific type of AI called uh, generative adversary adversarial networks, which is like two AIs talking to each other. Uh oh. <laughs> two neural two neural networks, so not really like AI. AIs. Like, yeah. but that's two, exactly yeah. It's two that's, neural networks. That's how it all starts. Yeah, you know that's you know <laughs> I don't know if did you hear about when Facebook did that with two AIs and they started speaking in a language they didn't understand and they had to shut them off. Oh yeah. I remember that. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> we don't know what they're saying. So. Yeah. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Is that a video? 
Yeah, no, I'm sure that's, that'll be something. Um, that's an interesting idea, right? That we're going to create all these different AIs like Google and Alexa and Siri, and then they'll start communicating with each other to like share data and then it's just over, <laughs> Yeah, you know? Hmm. That would be... It's going to be a, a brave new world. <laughs> new world order coming up. It's going to be a fun, a fun <laughs> ride for sure. Let's hope yeah. we figure out how to get on the vehicle. <laughs> or else we're just going to get left in the dust. Uh, so by the way, before we go, um, the guy that I was doing the survey with, I have a call with him oh, in excellent. about an hour. Um, cool. You get the results back, or did you guys definitely hit the hundred, right? We definitely hit the hundred, um, and we're going to discuss the the results t- today in about an hour. This guy's going to be uh, on our next podcast. Um, I can ask him. Yeah, I definitely want to see if we can get him get him on there. He oh talks. wait, yeah, no, I actually I watched this that Tom Billu. Uh, this guy's amazing. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a bunch of different crazy projects going on right now like wait you're talking to this guy in an hour yeah, yeah dude i literally just watched one tom bill you this guy is amazing oh my god that's so yeah, exciting he's like Holy doing shit. like uh downloading dreams and, and like <sighs> doing some inception stuff but like uh, while people are dreaming like implanting ideas and then it's like you know do we really have free will or you know Dude, just ask him, <laughs> dude, ask him for two. No, first of all, we don't, but ask him for 20 <laughs> minutes. No, um, and I, if you want me to prove it to you, that's that's fine. I'll, I'll show you. Um, ask him for 20 minutes of his time. We'll make anything work for him. If it's 11 30 p.m. at night and we can get him on this podcast, I swear to God, I will be so happy. Okay, guys, I'm really, I'm really liking what's happening here, right? And this is there's so many different reasons like why I'm loving this. Um, we're building something together. <laughs> right? We're like learning something. We have a body of work. Uh, we get to see the progress, like already just the oh, progress. Yeah. Like, already, look at these mics. <laughs> the I mics, mean, like the quality, of course. And then we're going to get, yeah. we're going to make it better and better and better. It's just going to keep getting better. And then I, I really like how if we keep like the long picture, like the bigger picture in mind about, you know, we'll become better orators, you know, we can use it in all different parts of our life. Um, we're learning about interesting topics. We're already got each other reading books. You know, I'm reading this, for the first time in my life. Dude, it's before, just before, it. before this book, my favorite book was Green Eggs and Ham. Because <laughs> I could say that was one of the only books that I have read from front to back. <laughs> All right. See? Well, you're about to transform. That's for sure. Um, yeah, um, I'm loving it. And, you know, another thing is, is I also like how it kind of, in a way, holds us accountable, right? Just to be presentable, to like, you know, be on a weekly basis, to be able to, um, you know, keep up with the readings so we have interesting things to say and like working our minds and that's that's powerful right because in this coronavirus so many people are i mean so many people are just like fuck it you know just not doing right. anything like and don't get me wrong i i find myself on some days and like i'm like, i'll play a video game too long i'm like ugh, what am i doing but this podcast i'm like well i got a podcast tomorrow gets me excited puts me in a better mood i'm like oh i gotta take yeah. a shower I gotta look good. You know what I mean? no seriously <laughs> you know, it helps shave. it does we, yeah yeah we went got for a, a run day. went for a run this morning or not you this know? morning but like around lunchtime absolutely nice. anyway just had to share that thought i like it no we're it does. definitely doing yeah. good things on the same page feels good yeah cool yeah. all right uh, we'll we'll shoot some text and we'll we'll uh, talk about our upcoming guest, our second right. guest. Yeah. Did you tell him how long, or did he give you a time? Like, oh, I can give you X amount of minutes. Or uh, yeah, he did ask. I didn't really have a. Um, I just said, you know, it could be thirty minutes, one hour, doesn't really matter. Say and 20. he's all about going with the flow. Type. Like, I cool. mean, he wrote he wrote a book called Living in Flow. So I mean, <laughs> he's he was uh, fine with. Okay, I'll re- have to check out his book as soon as possible. 